I see the moon and the moon sees me. The moon sees somebody I'd like to see. God bless the moon and God bless me. And God bless the somebody I want to see. Whenever I sing this lullaby, I feel homesick. My paternal grandmother would sing it to my siblings and me as we climbed into the car and headed back home from her house. My grandmother has dementia that has slowly advanced over the past eight years. After getting us both ready for bed this past summer, when I stayed with her for a few nights, I decided to try singing this song to see if she would remember it. And as I began singing it, she joined in with me on the second line. And we sang a lullaby to each other before we both went to bed. Deep in her memory, that song lives and reminds her of home and of family and of love. Because home is not always a place necessarily, but it can be people and home can be a song, too. Sometimes we need one another to call us home when we forget the way or forget the words. Our theme for Advent this year is close to home. The scripture passages we are about to encounter are passionate, emotional, and raw. Jesus tells the disciples of God's coming judgment this morning. Later, Luke will tell us of the visitation of the angel Gabriel to Mary. We will hear strong words urging us to repent by John the Baptist. And the song of Mary will captivate us with its powerful imagery of a world made right. They are all expressing some longing for God's world to be made real on earth, for Emmanuel, God with us, to come dwell among each of us and set the world just right. The season of Advent and Christmas can bring up a mixture of complicated emotions for some of us. We might be homesick. We might be missing loved ones who have died due to illness or tragedy. We might feel lonely or dislocated, far away from family and friends. We might be weary with the pandemic and news of variants, weary of the ways the pandemic has changed how we open our homes and our lives to one another. This year, my prayer for us all is that Emmanuel will comfort us in these times of homesickness and grief, loneliness and exhaustion, that we will experience God's closeness this Advent, and God will bring us home no matter how far we wander. Jesus points us towards that way home in today's passage from the Gospel of Luke. Sometimes called the Little Apocalypse, you might have heard echoes of the book of Daniel in this prophecy from Jesus. Well, if you did, you were listening closely, Bible scholars, because they are definitely there. Jesus is building on the Jewish prophetic tradition in this passage, creating images of what the world will be like when God returns to dwell among the people. He tells his listeners that they will see signs all over the place, in the sun and in the moon, in the stars and on the earth, and that they must pay attention to what they see rather than ignore it no matter how disturbing or distressing those signs may be. And then, as Jesus tends to do, he tells a completely different story. Rather than tell a story of God's power and might, of God flying in on a cloudy, beautiful day, this is a story about a fig tree. But it is a story about hope. He tells them that God's kingdom will be like the new leaves on a fig tree in the spring. And yes, those moments of early spring are beautiful. The return of the birds, the flowers coming up from the ground, and those brand new tender leaves on branches long barren, 
That is the kingdom of God, too. But now we have these two contrasting images side by side of God's kingdom, both full of distress and delight and surprising each in their own way. Like the shock of Jesus riding down from heaven on a cloud. I've always imagined it as like Jesus surfing on the clouds, like down to earth. So too will the new leaves on the fig tree evoke wonder and fear in us. I wonder if this is what the world may feel like to some of us right now. We're coming up on the two-year anniversary of the pandemic shutdown in the United States. Migrants from across the sea and across our borders enter our country seeking refuge. Natural disasters plague our planet. Turmoil, like the turmoil Jesus describes, it seems to be everywhere we turn. And yet those fig trees continue to make their new leaves every summer, Jesus tells us. God keeps showing up in our world every Advent in the coldest days and the longest nights, to make all things new. And my grandmother can still sing, I see the moon and the moon sees me. No matter how much of her memory or her ability to care for herself, she has lost. Jesus tells the disciples to stand up and raise their heads. Jesus tells his listeners to physically embody hope by looking around with expectation for what is coming. He commands them to be alert, to keep watch, to be ready for the change about to come. He says to do this because redemption is near. Not only is our redemption near, Jesus reassures us, but the kingdom of heaven is near. Our deepest longings often intersect with our deepest hopes. Jesus knows this. We want God to swoop in, to surf in on the clouds and rescue us, coming to save the world. We want God to reveal hope to us at a pace we can handle, like the slow growth of new leaves on a tree. We long for change, but not too much change, not too soon. But we long for the pain around us and the pain within us to stop, for the unanswered questions that gnaw away to disappear, for God to show up and explain it all. Instead of answers, though, we get signs and wonders. We get spring flowers. We get confusing parables. We get God with us, Emmanuel, showing up at any time asking us to always be ready for the kingdom to break through, to come unannounced and interrupt all of our lives. The hope of Advent, the hope that Jesus promises us today, is not a shallow hope. It is a solid hope based on what we know God has done and will do. One of my professors in seminary called hope a memory of the future. I love that definition. Hope is a memory of the future. Hope is full of dreams and desires and foolishness. Hope is defiance in the midst of suffering. Hope is the daily choice to persevere, to sacrifice, and to keep growing even in the midst of tragedy. Hoping well means risking disappointment risking rebellion and risking disruption. This is the kind of hope Jesus promises us if we stand up and raise our heads. But the shadow side of hope is despair, like from our confession earlier. And such a temptation it is to despair, and it is very difficult to resist. Why hope if nothing ever changes? Cynicism asks us. Why try to make anything better if everything just stays the same? Conventional wisdom may say to us, the systems are working fine, so why change them? Despair tells us to numb ourselves with addictions, and we look at those who seem hopeful as foolish sometimes, because hope asks us to take risks, and no one wants to be wrong. 
We are afraid of hope because we are afraid of losing control. To pretend that we do not care is safer than to never feel the disappointment that comes with hope. But the sadness of this is that it will completely close us off to wonder or to God, to others, or to ourselves. That kind of despair says, no one will get to my heart, not even me. And then here comes Jesus with his prophecies and his parables to provoke us and to intensify those longings for change and new life. He calls to what could be within and around us. He calls the world and us to repentance. He creates a vision for a new future that exposes the realities of the present. He is speaking of Advent hope. Advent draws us into the hope of God's kingdom here on earth, inviting us to live into the tensions of this season. Jesus is here among us, yet not here yet. The kingdom of heaven is so close we can almost see it, but it is still slightly out of focus. Advent hope challenges us this morning to say yes, to say yes to beauty, to say yes to glory, to say yes to wonder, to say yes to awe. Keep your heads up and your eyes on the heavens, hoping that God will be there. Plant that tree, hoping it will survive the winter. Sing that lullaby to someone you love, hoping they will remember the tune. Embody these words of Mary Oliver from her poem, When Death Comes. When it's over, I want to say, all my life, I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom taking the world into my arms. When it's over, I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened or full of argument. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. Say yes to hope this Advent. Say yes to our collective longing for home. Say yes to that song within your heart. <laughs>